See, I've been thinking about this. And I'm cool with this. I would take Traylon Burks, pick 24. No hesitation. Won't blink. What's good, people? It's your boy, Mr. Rome. Cowboys fan talk. Right back like I never left. What's good with y'all, man? Listen, it's Thursday, the weekend coming up. You know what I'm saying? These is um dead hours of the um NFL year, you know, or scary hours, whatever you want to call it, man. It's a lot of what if going on, a lot of, you know what I'm saying, hypothesizing and people just, you know, you're left to your own devices, man. If you're not creative, you're probably struggling right now. You don't know what to talk about. You know, but my mind always going on the Cowboys, always. Um, today, I felt like I would go ahead and dwell into my first mock draft, man. First mock draft, man. We got a little bit of time before the draft, about a month and a half, I feel like, um, almost two months, I think. And, you know, as it ramps up before free agency and stuff like that, my first initial thoughts before, you know, we see what players are getting released or getting traded. And we got to kind of put our early thoughts out. These are early thoughts. My first early, long, seven-round mock. You know what I'm saying? So, first and foremost, without any hesitation, without any speculation, I'm letting y'all know right now, man, I would take Traylon Burks. No question. Traylon Burks. Receiving out, receiver out of Arkansas, man. You know why? Um, first and foremost, the reason why I came to this conclusion is like I said, man, I'm bracing for impact. Amari Cooper is probably going to be gone. Let me make this clear once again. I don't want to get rid of Amari Cooper. I would love to keep him. He's amazing. Dak works well with him. I've went over that. But just in case this is your first time coming to the channel and you missed it, I want Amari Cooper. Um, I want to trade him or release him. But my front office don't care about what I want or what a lot of the fans want. They do what they want. And I feel like at the end of the day, because of his cap hit, because of the whole thing he went through with the Joneses this year, it's a wrap for him. So if Amari's going to be gone, let's talk about solutions. And I don't think that our cheap ownership, although we'd get some money because Amari's gone, I don't think that they're going to go out and pick up another big money receiver. They're not going to get Allen Robinson or nothing like that. They're going to move CD to his rightful place. Number one receiver. And we can have a talk about if CD's the number one receiver another day. Because my boy Jay Tuck and me was going to battle with people on Twitter because people tripping, thinking that CD ain't ready. And he extra ready. Um, who's going to fill that void? I feel like we're going to do it either the first or the second round. So let me go ahead and get to it. Um, seven round mock. Um, I'll put it on the screen. I went with Traylon Burks, number one. Traylon Burks is amazing. He reminds me of... A Dez Bryant mixed with a Debo Samuel. I know that's high praise because Dez is Dez and Debo's Debo. He's very physical. Um, he had like 200 plus rushing yards this year and a touchdown rushing, like in 30 carries. Like he can tote the rock for real. Not this ain't speculation. Um, he, he, like I said, he's very physical um, at the point of catch and very physical after catch with his yak. Um, I feel like he'd just be a good fit with CD. I would love to see that combination, Burks and Lamb. I just feel like, first of all, that sounds like a dope restaurant. Burks and Lamb. But anyway, <laughs> we had to eat. Um, second round, uh, pick 56, I went with Chad Chad Muma. Um, Chad Muma's a tackling machine. Chad Muma would be, it would be like the return of Sean Lee. Somebody with amazing football instincts. That's what I'm looking for out of my linebackers. Great football instinct. Don't ever choose wrong. He led the country in total tackles, led the country in, in solo tackles his senior year. Um, he had, like, two pick sixes. Like, Muma, three interceptions. Muma can play football. Let's just keep it simple. He can play football. Yeah, man. I took Muma. Then I went with Boye Mafe. Third pick. I think we need edge help. 
I want to continue to build around Micah, give him assets around him. And Boye Mafe, I feel like, although he's a little older, I think he's like 24, um, or he's going to be 24 later this year, I feel like he's going to be incredible value at that pick. Um, a little bit of a raw edge rusher, but amazing first step, good with his hands. I feel like from what I've seen, and it's only been a little bit, I feel like he would be a great addition to this team because he doesn't have to come in and necessarily start, but he could. He has that type of talent. I feel like he's going to hit the ground running and have an impact immediately. Um, then, I ain't going to lie to y'all, man. I went with James Cook, man, running back out of Georgia. And I know you're like, ah, we got Zeke. We got Tony Pollard. We already paid Zeke. Zeke is incredible. But I do feel like, and it, it might not be Cook. I just know James Cook. I saw him in the national championship. He has a little something with him. I feel like because we paid Zeke, we ain't going to have no room to pay nobody else. Now, either next year we're going to move off Zeke and pay TP, but not pay him enough, or we're going to move off both of them. Either way, we need to have a great running back in the pipeline, not somebody that we're thinking about. And I feel like James Cook could be that running back. I feel like he's a sleeper, dope addition to this offense. You know what I'm saying? And you don't wait until you got a problem to try to fix it. You see the problem coming and you get ahead of it. So I would take James Cook. Then I took Luke Fortner, um, Fortner um, center out of Kentucky. Not too familiar with him. Um, I just took him based on his rank. Um on the big board and that we would need a center probably. You know, we need some competition, some legitimate competition. I know we got Mark Forniak, I think. Um, I think out of Nebraska, already on the roster, but I want to give Tyler a little bit of competition. I really, really do. Then I went with Derek Dees Jr. Um tight end out of San Jose State. And he just looks like uh I think he's like six four, two forty something. Like an athletic freak, like a, a a tight end that we haven't had on this roster yet. And with us losing Schultz, I feel like we need to put another tight end in the pipeline. I know we got McKeon. Obviously, I know we got Jarwin. But I feel like we bring somebody in and start getting them ready because they might be taking somebody's spot. Maybe this year they'll get some reps, but you just got to be smart, man. And maybe I went too early with the tight end, but I feel like this tight end draft is so deep, you got to come away with somebody. You know what I'm saying then I just went with Noah Ellis um, out of Idaho, big defensive um, interior lineman. Another person that's like Big Bo, um, Quentin Bohana last year. Somebody that can clog that middle, man. Um, somebody that we might compare with Big Bo. We need to just put two, two, two run cloggers in the middle. But um, still not as familiar with him as I would want to be. That was my first mock. I did a second one with similar players where I went with Petrie. And I'll put that up on the screen. I went with Petrie um, in the second round. Jalen Petrie, the safety. Um, then I went with Boy Mafe. Then I went with Cole Strange. I, I went with Cole Strange. I, I like him at guard, man. I feel like he'd be pretty physical. I feel like he could step in and be a more physical Connor Williams. And that's an investment in Zeke and Tony Pollard. Somebody that's more physical at, uh, at the point of attack. I went with Dees Jr. again and Luke Fortner a little bit later. Probably his proper place to take Fortner in the fifth round. I said about a little bit earlier, I took him in the fifth, but I took him the first pick in my other draft. And then I went with um, Zaquandre White, halfback in the sixth round. So either way, these are holes I'm trying to fill. I want to, you know, get a back on this in on this roster. Probably going fourth round for running backs a little bit too high. But somebody that I feel like I got confidence in, you know? So that's why I went with James Cook on my first seven-round mock. And then when I remixed it a little bit, when I went with Petrie instead of Chad Muma, um, just thinking, I know we got Jabril Cox in this roster. Everybody's forgotten about him. You know what I'm saying? Obviously, we got Micah, but I want to keep Micah free, so I want another linebacker. In that draft, I was thinking maybe we'll get a veteran linebacker to bring in a free agency, you know, to pair with Jabril Cox and Micah, you know, if we don't do the draft capital. But then I, my favorite one was the first one I mentioned because Chad Muma is a tackling monster, and I want somebody that's sure tackler, to put with Jabril Cox, who's great in coverage. Like, that means you can keep um, Micah completely free. I would love that. So that's why I think I like the Mooma draft better. Y'all let me know which one y'all like better. Um, let me know how y'all feel on my first seven-round mock. Did I get value up and down the board? Let me know who y'all would pick in those slots. But look, Traylon Burks is the pick I want. I went from Jordan Davis. I was thinking Zion Johnson at one point. Um, the Kobe Dean, 
But Traylon Burks is a one of one. He just is. I think we need him on this team, man. It's your boy, Mr. Rome, man. I'll.